Hey everyone, Chris here from Varsity Gaming, and welcome to another episode of Siege School. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Valkyrie and her cameras. As with the other episodes, today's format is going to be talking about some basic information about her, how some of her mechanics work, and then moving on to the quiz segment of the show. And I would just like to say, since this has been mentioned before in the comments, this series is meant for beginners. So for those of you who complain that all the questions I ask are too easy or the information I give is too basic, that is why. The reason I don't delve too far into the advanced topics is because they're far too situational and there's never one concrete answer. So it take far too long for me to discuss any of that and it will also be all over the place in terms of answers. Now with all that aside, let's get into the episode. Valkyrie is the second DLC defending operator to be released and is part of the Navy SEALs CTU. She's arguably one of the most powerful defensive operators and is widely used in competitive scenes. She comes with two weapons, the MPX, her SMG, and the Spaz-12, which is her shotgun. The MPX is a preferred choice for aggressive players, as it allows long-range shooting when peeking outside, and can be comboed with outdoor cameras in order to see where the enemy is before you peek. Meanwhile, the Spaz-12 is a much more defensive option. It allows for close-range shooting, and pretty much that's it. As for her sidearms, she only has one, the Desert Eagle. This pistol is pretty much a hand cannon and can destroy anything it touches, however, it has probably the worst recoil of any gun in the game. However, due to its high damage, it's primarily used as a way to destroy walls and make areas where you can put Valkyrie cameras or peek as Valkyrie. Very rarely should you use this gun as an actual weapon to attack, and more so use it as a utility weapon to destroy the environment. Valkyrie comes with three black eye cameras. They can be placed anywhere inside the map. What this means is that if you throw a camera outside and it accidentally goes out of bounds, it'll automatically be destroyed. So it is very crucial that if you're gonna jump outside or throw a camera outside a window to make sure it does not land outside of bounds. Now this can be a bit of an issue because Valkyrie can only throw her cameras outside after the prep phase is finished, meaning time is a huge factor. You don't wanna be caught outside trying to line up a perfect Valkyrie camera, but you also don't want to just throw them willy-nilly. On the overall, it really does not matter if you get caught on the enemy detected outside for spending too long throwing the cameras outside. However, you just don't want to stay out there. If it detects you for like one or two seconds, that's fine. Any longer and you're really in danger of being killed. The reason why it doesn't really matter is because although they know that you were out there throwing cameras, they don't know exactly where you threw them. The only situation that this really doesn't work in is when the enemy is running an IQ. Now IQ is a direct counter to Valkyrie and can really make her life miserable by not allowing her to have any cameras outside. She can track them from up to 20 meters away and find them very, very easily with her scanner. So in situations where you know the enemy is going to be running IQ a lot, perhaps you might want to run someone else besides Valkyrie, as IQ is pretty much going to cancel you out and make your kit irrelevant. On top of that, Twitch and Thatcher are also direct counters to Valkyrie. Twitch drone can shock the cameras and destroy them, however most of the time, Twitch drone isn't able to reach where the Valkyrie cameras have been placed. The reason for this is because a lot of Valkyrie players place the cameras really far up high, and Twitch drone does not have the range to destroy it. The only other direct counter to Valkyrie is Thatcher. Since this EMP grenades destroy all electronic gadgets, it will also destroy Valkyrie cameras. The only thing is it should be a pretty rare occurrence where Thatcher actually counters Valkyrie, as Valkyrie cameras are not normally placed next to reinforced walls or other places where Thatcher would throw his grenades. Alright, now we're going to move on to barricades and windows. This is something that's very important to know when you're going to play Valkyrie. When you're planning on throwing cameras out specific windows, what you should do is break those windows before the prep phase is over to give yourself more time to throw the camera properly. If you have to destroy every window as you go to throw your camera out, it'll take up too much time and you'll likely get shot while throwing your camera. And another important thing to note is that the glass behind the barricaded window will stop a Valkyrie camera. So if you're going to prep windows beforehand, make sure to break the glass as well. Easy way to do this is just to melee it. This can also be used as a way to counter Valkyrie. An easy way to tell if a Valkyrie camera has been thrown out a specific direction is if the barricade itself is completely intact, but the glass on the window is broken. Since most Valkyries will break the window and then throw out the camera and then barricade it back, it's pretty easy to tell when a camera has been thrown out a window if there's no glass at all. So because of this, if you're playing Valkyrie, the best idea is to run out through doors. They have no glass and the only way they can really tell if you threw a camera out there is if you get spotted or if they see the broken barricade pieces on the ground. But depending on your rank, a lot of players might not notice it. Alright, now I'm going to talk about the last topic before we get into the quiz, which is how the camera rotation works and the best way to throw your cameras. There are three states that the Valkyrie camera can be in. Roof mounted, floor mounted, and wall mounted. What this means is that when you throw a camera at an object, it'll force the camera to orient itself so either that it's facing away from a wall, facing away from a roof, or facing away from the floor. When the camera is roof mounted or floor mounted, it can spin at 360 degrees and the only thing it can't see is either the floor or the roof depending on how it's mounted. This is generally the best way to mount the cameras as it gives you the most view and can let you see the entire room depending on how you have it set up. And then the other option is wall mounted. 
What this means is that the camera can't rotate 360 degrees but instead 180 degrees, but it has a wider up and down range. This is generally not as useful as a floor mounted or roof mounted camera, as you want to be able to spin to see most of the room, as opposed to just look up or down. Alright, so that is it for the information segment of this video. We're now going to move on to the quiz segment. If you're unfamiliar with the series, basically I will ask you one question and give you 10 seconds to think of an answer. Once the 10 seconds are up, I'll give you my answer and explain why that is the correct one. And if you got it right, you can give yourself a point. At the very end of the video, I'll put up a scoreboard to show you what rank you get based on how many questions you got right. Now keep in mind as I say in every video, not every answer is 100% concrete. There are a lot of variables to every situation, and there's not always one right answer. So it's up to you to decide whether your answer is right or not. Anyways, now let's get into the questions. Here's your first question. How far can you throw a Valkyrie camera? Now remember, since the game measures ping distances in meters, that is the unit that we're going to be using. With 10 seconds on the clock, go. And time's up. Now this question was a little bit tougher. This isn't something many people will know and really does not apply to many situations, but it is a good reference point just in case you ever need it. The answer to the question is 16 meters. Now this distance is assuming flat surface and it doesn't change levels. Now since this one was a bit of a tough question, I'll give you guys the point if you got within two meters. So if you guess between 14 to 18 meters, give yourself the point. Question two. This one's gonna be a bit of a scenario. You're defending house basement for secure area, which means you're reinforcing all of the garage walls. Player wants to put a Valkyrie camera to watch site. Is it a good idea to place the camera above the garage wall? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. Now the correct answer is no. Although the player has good intentions and wants to be able to see sight once they breach in, the main issue is that if you're defending an objective where there's an outward facing wall like garage and house, you're very likely going to be banneting and muting off the wall. And since the enemy wants to get into the objective, they're likely going to thatcher the wall to get rid of the bans and the mutes. This will in turn destroy your Valkyrie camera. Basically, if it's anywhere near the wall, the thatcher grenade should have enough range to destroy it. So while the camera will have a good view on the site, by the time it is necessary to be used, it'll already be destroyed by a thatcher EMP. If you want a camera to watch sight, then put it away from the wall where it won't be thatchered. Question 3. This is a follow-up to question 2. Should you ever place Valkyrie cameras on objective sites? Since there are three game modes, Hostage, Secure Area, and Bomb, give one answer for each game mode. If you get at least two right, just give yourself one mark for the entire question. Alright, with 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. Now the answer for this question is primarily preference-based. This is one of those questions I said at the beginning where you can determine whether you were right or wrong on your own accord. Personally, for me, I'd say you should never put a camera on site for any of the game modes, whether it be hostage, bomb, or secure area. This is heavily dependent on your playstyle and how you and your team work together. For me and my team, we primarily use cameras as a way to tell where the enemies are coming from and how they're going to go about pushing the objective. For the most part, if an enemy is on site, you should know that already just based on what you're hearing or what your teammates are saying. When it's secure area, it's fairly easy to tell as they will be contesting the objective. When it's bomb, you should always have a line of sight to every part of the objective to make sure they can't plant without you seeing them. And when it's hostage, if they're already on site, you've pretty much already lost the game anyways. Because of this, I don't think a camera on site is ever useful. If they manage to make it to the objective site and you have absolutely no idea where they are, a camera is not going to help you in that situation. The only time it'll ever help is if the enemy decides to just not push at all and wait in a corner, and then the camera can be used to call them out. But this is very rare and never really worth giving up one Valkyrie camera for. Question 4. This will be the final question before the bonus question at the end of the video. You're looking to put a camera at the skylight on bank to get as much view of the room as possible. On the screen is the room that you're trying to look at. Where do you put the camera? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Alright, time's up. Now there are a lot of good places where you could put the camera where it won't really be seen, but by far the best place to put it is in the plant on the second floor, directly east of where Valkyrie is facing right now. When you're placing cameras to watch room, you want them to be as concealed as possible, which is why putting them in the corners of the room is usually a good idea as the shadows make it hard to see the camera unless someone's on it. 
Now the reason why you put it in the bush is because the shrubbery actually blocks a lot of the view of the camera and makes it harder to see. It blends in really well with the shadows of the plant and just overall will be really hard for the attackers to find. And on top of that, it has a very clear view of the entire room. Now it's time for the bonus question, question number five. How do you properly conceal two Valkyrie cameras on this wall? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. Now there's only one possible way to hide the cameras perfectly on this wall, and that is to use them to make googly eyes on the pig. This way your opponents will either think that it's just naturally part of the map, or if they do see it, they'll find it so ridiculous that they'll just let it be. This is a foolproof plan that has worked every single time I've ever played it in Ranked. So if you ever want to protect your cameras, just make sure to make googly eyes on the closest animal or even painting. Anything will work, as long as it looks silly. Alright guys, that concludes today's episode of Siege School. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, here are your ranks based on how well you guys did in the quiz. Let me know down in the comments below what you got, as I'm curious to see how well you guys did. As well, if you have any suggestions for future Siege School episodes, let me know down below, and I'll try to make a video on it. And I do want to just plug two things before I finish the video. One, since Siege School has been doing pretty well so far, I decided to make a design for the series and add it onto a shirt. For those of you who don't know, I do have a store for the channel on Design by Humans. The link is down below and will be at the end of the video as well. But there are a few designs on there, one of them including the Siege School design that you can see on the screen now. Buying this merch is a good way to support the channel, as well as show that you guys care. And two, I do stream on Twitch. I'll be live today from 12 noon until about 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I do stream Siege every single day starting at noon. If you want to watch, make sure to follow the link on the screen or in the description below. And you guys can feel free to ask me any questions on stream, I'll try to answer everything in chat. Anyways, that's enough self-plugs for me today. That is it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you learned something new. I'll see you guys in next week's episode. Take care.